Hey friends, welcome to Her Home and Harvest. My name is Alana. If you haven't been here before, I am going to give you a quick April garden tour and um, I've got a few things we got to get done today. So I figured I'd start right here with these beautiful cucumbers and the pineapple. The pineapple. <laughs> Let's jump right in. So these cucumbers I started from seed back in February, if you saw that video. Um, there's little baby cucumbers on it. I think I waited too long to put these in the ground. And so the, I think that the plant was too far along by the time I put it in. Um, but we're gonna see how it goes and see if any of these cucumbers um, come to size. Um, something is already eating it, so that's exciting. These two are same exact variety, planted at the same exact time. This is the same exact soil. <laughs> I have no clue why these ones are doing so much better than these, um, as far as size goes at least. Uh, but yeah, we'll just keep an eye on them and see how they do. But I'm going to plant more uh, cucumbers just to see if we can get a little <laughs> more assurance in our harvest. This is the pineapple that has been in this pot for almost three years now. Yeah, almost three years. Um, and I have never gotten a pineapple from it. I'm doing something wrong. So yeah, there's that. This is one of the Roma tomatoes. So we can make our own pizza sauce this year. The flowers are just starting to come in. So I'm excited for this little guy. This is a Thai pepper plant. Just, it's still producing Thai peppers. I've obviously not come out to harvest any of these. They're just dying on here. Um, but like, here's a new one. It's tiny, but here's a new Thai pepper. So I don't know, it's still chugging along. Um, those are some basil. These are the sweet potato slips that I transplanted last week. They, uh, they, they're struggling a little bit. I don't know if it's the heat or what, but these are clearly two different varieties. Both of these are just from organic potatoes that I bought at the store. They were different stores, I guess, so they were different varieties. Normally when I grow sweet potatoes, um, like if I get slips from the store, they look like this. I've never seen them look like this, but I assure you, it was a sweet, a sweet potato. It was an organic sweet potato, so I don't know what these are going to turn out to, like how it's going to grow, but we'll find out. They are, I mean, they're, like I said, they're a little droopy, but they look like they're doing okay. Here is the eggplant. I've never grown eggplant, um, but I planted that. Um, I bought it at the store. It was an impulse buy. And this is another Roma tomato. I think I planted this a week after I planted that one. They seeds started on the same day, but went into a pot. Different, um, but this one's not as big. This is the white scallop squash that we started from seed, and it is already got some squash on it. There's one there and another one right there. And then there's actually two in here, um, two plants. There's one plant there and one plant here. This is that jalapeno plant. I've shown you guys a couple times and I told you I thought it was done. Here we are. It's coming back to life. <laughs> um, this was planted back in 2019. So three years. Been overwintered year after year. Produces a ton of jalapenos. So I have no good reason to pull it out of that pot. These are the basil that we planted. We started all of these from seed as well. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys me starting these bok choy, but these bok choy I got started, um, honestly I don't remember because <laughs> I didn't write a tag. Um, I took pictures though, so I could probably go look at pictures. Um, and this one's doing okay. You can actually see like the beginning of the bok choy leaves. Um, these other ones are really struggling and you can see why if you look underneath this leaf right there. Do you see how many aphids that is? Oh, so gross. Yeah, gross. Super gross. Here I planted three cucumbers. I seeded them and there should be one here and there should be one here and there should be one here and I've got nothing coming up yet. I'm going to give it another week and if nothing comes up, I will try again. <laughs> this is the lime tree somebody gave me, but check it out. There's a little lime on it. This is a mandarin. Um, again, somebody gave it to me and it's, it's happy. It's never given me a mandarin, but it's kind of happy in this pot. One of the things on my to-do list is to come in here and paint all my trees 
to protect them. You can see this, the trunk was painted. It's I have a white paint that I use. I use IV Organics, but just to protect it from sunburn. So I need to come out and do that to all the new growth on my plants. Okay, over here we have the wild flowers that I planted that I started indoors from seed. And I get you closer, but you can't see it, but there's a huge spider web right there, and I'm not gonna lean through that. Um, so in the back, it's just a California wildflower mix, and then these are zinnia some sort of mix of zinnias. Here is cherry tomato. These guys were so much smaller when I put them in and look they're almost touching the, the, the trellis and there we go we've already got flowers. So with these cherry tomatoes are indeterminate so I've made sure to come in and pull out every little sucker. So here's one right here. I just come in and I just pop that right off. So here's a little sucker. Take that out. And then these are cayenne peppers. These guys are really struggling. They are also, they have been covered in aphids as well. This is another cherry tomato. These are more cayennes. These are my tomatillos. First, first set right here. And then there's another one here. And another one right here. This one has a ton of flowers, if you can see that. This is, um... Oh, this is a jalapeno, also not doing so great. This is a poblano that I bought in the store. It's doing really good, but something also has come out here and ate a little bit of it. This is, okay, here, here, and here are all three California wonder peppers, all planted on the same day, but these guys are doing so much better than these, and this one's doing a little bit better than this, so. I don't know why, just in size. They, they all look all right. And this is a beefsteak tomato, and this is another beefsteak tomato. I think I've talked a couple times this year about planting behind these roses for the first time, and <laughs> this was not the smartest thing I've done. Um, the problem is that because they're right behind the rose bushes, I cut the stems as they sort of die off and then also I'm going to have to harvest fruit and being right behind a thorny rose bush that just wasn't ideal. These two not as big of a problem because of the pathway but we'll see how that goes. On this other side over here I planted just a bunch of potatoes which I think was smart because I won't have to come in and um, do anything with them here and I think this whole section I'll plant onions so that once again I won't have to do much behind the rose bushes. So I need to come in here and cut these back. But you guys, if you could smell these, they smell amazing. All right, over here we have more carrots, which I don't know, we, we harvested one last time. I think let's go ahead and harvest one this time. Let's see if we can find a good one. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's huge. I wonder how short it's going to be. It was so short last time. Um, let's see the next one. Oh, that one's pretty big too. But not as big. There's a really bushy one in the back here. Yeah, I know I'm not wearing gloves. I'm really bad at that. Oh, that one's not that big. Okay, well, I'm going to take out this one. We're going to see if this was worth pulling up. <laughs> oh, there it is. Ooh, that's so funny. So it's really short, but do you guys see how fat that carrot is? Like, it's so fat. Um, you can see right where the soil got, um, like it hit the clay. So I had this much of potting soil and then clay underneath it, and that's where it got stunted. But look at how fat that got. I mean, I know that's not like crazy, but that's pretty good for me. Um, all right. Here are onions that I uh, planted from sets and mixed in all. These are just green onions, and I probably should just come in here and yank them all, honestly, because they're just taking up space and energy from my onions. And then this is the massive green onion patch we've talked about. Um, this was cilantro. I ripped it out and just left the cilantro there. This is parsley. I've got to be honest, I don't eat parsley, so I'm going to rip all of this out, and it's starting to kind of get 
dried up anyway. Um, these are all uh, turnips. These are turnips that I started. And then here is our kale. Kale's doing great. Something is enjoying eating it way more than I am. I've been really bad about coming out here and harvesting it. Underneath the kale is a bunch of carrots that I planted. Probably not the best place to put them, but I did. And then these are all um, potatoes. This is my gem avocado tree that lost most of its leaves. If you look, it's got a lot of new growth on it. So I think it got over whatever it was that was causing all its leaves to drop. Um, I'm not seeing any signs of actually getting avocados this year. All of these little um, flowers fell off. Oh, there's like a maybe right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then this is the holiday avocado. I really need to come in and paint all of this here. Let me show you. I really need to come in and paint this so it doesn't get sunburned. You can already see it's not as bright green as like this that's been in the shade. This is nice dark green and this is kind of turning yellow. I really need to come in and paint this. And then here's the pluots. Check this out. There are so many pluots many pluots you guys. I have thinned over 300 pluots off of these two trees um, and honestly the other tree I've only thinned off like maybe 20 or so. Um, the pluots on this tree, this one here, this is what the pluots look like and this one I've never, did not give me any fruit last year so we're going to see what this tastes like this year. This one probably has about 30 or 40 but this guy Look at this it's just crazy I keep having to come in and thin more I just find like if I look at this one oh it looks pretty good this one's got a spot on it so just pop that one off because um, it's just it's not gonna be able to support all this fruit look at this branch it's just crazy so many pluots I also need to come out here and cut things back I don't know if you can see this this long branch right here is crossing this other branch so I need to come and cut this off um, it's not quite ready for summer pruning but this is going to cause problems and probably make all this fruit fall off anyway so I need to come in and cut this off these are the apples this is an Anna apple it is an apple that um, I think originated in Israel so it's a desert apple so it likes our hot climate I had somebody really recommend these to me and I'm happy that they did because they're doing so well. Um, and this tree has, I don't know, plenty. If you want to stand back, this is what it looks like. It has about 40 or so apples on it that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to thin. I can't let this many apples be this close together. Um, and then this one is my golden dorset. Look at how pretty they are. Um, these apples look almost white when they are done um, growing. I already thinned this tree. This tree also has maybe um, 30 or 40 apples on it. Then we have the peach trees. <clears throat> Let's come down in here and show you these. So there's tons of fruit here. This one is my August Pride peach. And then the tree on the other side I'll go over to is my Eva's Pride. Um, I thinned off 200, well, a little over 200 peaches from these two trees, and I'm pretty excited. There's, on this entire tree, there's about one peach every, you know, six inches. This is the other peach I was talking about. This is Eva's Pride. These peaches usually ripen in May, so by next month you can already see they're starting to blush. So there, and there's a ton of these guys too. I don't know if you can see all those. There's a lot of them though. This is the Cara Cara orange. It's not doing so great, never has been, ever since I put it in the ground. I need to come in here um, because this is dead. Oh, well this isn't, but this top portion here is dead. So I need to take that out. But it flowered a ton this year. Um, but nothing really came of it. Oh, look at that. There's one right there. No, we'll see if we get any oranges this year. Finally is our little Eureka lemon, which is 
You know, it looks like it's struggling, but I don't know. It gave me like five lemons last year, and it looks like it's going to give me a few more this year. There's a couple of potential, and then there's actually one right here. Can you, if you can see that, there's a lemon. I also wanted to give you a quick update on what we're doing inside. Um, I feel like these things are going so slow, but then I look back on the video that I made in March, and it's a huge difference. So, um, and I think I made that towards the end of March, and this is the middle of April. So, big difference. Let me show you. These are the Thai peppers. Look at how much bigger they've gotten. Let's try to pull them out here. They are so much bigger. They're so happy. I do not need this many Thai peppers. I wasn't expecting them to do so well. Um, I've never grown them from seed. So I thin them down to two in each cell and I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these or I, I, I might even give them away, honestly. I'm not all of them. Um, I planted them for a reason, but I don't want to plant more than two really maybe three and um yeah i got six in here so <clears throat> i'll have to decide what to do with those these are the onions and oh look i do have the date that i planted these 313 okay so it's been a month um yeah the onions are doing good i've just been keeping them kind of trimmed um till they're ready to go out which i may put these out today I didn't realize that when you did this that you can plant them like super, super close together. And so it's a little bit of wasted space, but it's fine. Um, and then back here we have the marigolds, same two marigolds. They need water. They look like they need water, um, but they're doing really good. And then in the back there, um, I planted out some of the wildflowers and these are just what's left. They're looking a little sad. I think they um, need more space than what they have in here. So. That's that. And then I actually just planted all of my sweet potato slips, but I had already, you know, like I'd already ruined this potato by doing this to it. And there's still like more slips that are coming up. So I'm going to, I think, just experiment and see how many more I can get out of this thing. And then, um, you know, if I can't really get anything at it, I'll just throw it away. I already got what I needed. And if I can, maybe I'll plant more. Maybe I'll give them to somebody. I don't know. And then these are the sweet potato slips for my other sweet potatoes that I had done outside. Um, and they have plenty of roots. I just didn't have the space to grow them. I'm either gonna find space for these or I'm going to give them away. Haven't decided yet, but that's what's going on indoors. All right, so that's everything that we're growing right now. I have a few things that I'd like to get planted. I gotta pull out that parsley and um, I've gotta get up there and um, cut back some of those crossing branches on my fruit trees and then if I have a little bit of time left before my daughter wakes up I'm gonna go paint those trees um, because it is already really sunny um, almost every single day it's already been hundred degrees um, in April <laughs> so I'm not I'm not gonna be surprised if it gets really hot this summer and I'm gonna have to probably shade those avocado trees so at the very least let's go get them painted for those of you who don't know, I am in Southern California, zone 9B. What that means for me is that it gets really hot here really fast. And so, like I said, it's already been in the 90s. We actually had one day that we hit 102 already. And, you know, it's not even, I mean, spring's barely just started. It hasn't even spring for a month. So um, if you're looking at what I'm doing and you're thinking, oh, no, I haven't started my tomatoes yet and I haven't started my summer squash yet or my peppers or whatever it is don't worry about it chances are that you don't live where it's as hot as I do or um, maybe you do there's still plenty of time to get these things done so don't don't look at what I'm doing and think that you're doing something wrong uh, I'm also not a very experienced gardener I've been gardening for four years and I have learned so much and I do feel like I have a lot of knowledge to share but I think that I have way more also to learn and um, I love learning from my community here on YouTube and I love learning from my local gardening community and just kind of sharing ideas with people and what they're doing with the stuff they have in the garden and how they're growing it the better uh, ways they've tried, uh, things that have worked for them that didn't, and the reasons. Um, there's so much to learn and so much to experiment with, and I love experimenting with things. So this, for example, is I'm planting six new varieties that I've never grown before right here, and all of these are things I've never grown. So I've never grown pumpkins, I've never grown watermelons, and I've never grown winter squash. And so we're going to give that a try this year. I've grown plenty of 
uh, summer squash, but never winter squash. And I've never grown any kind of melon. So this is something I'm going to learn about this year. And if you guys have any tips and advice for me, I would be happy to take them. Um, but I just love experimenting in the garden. So if you have something that you um, are trying new this year, share it in the comments below. So um, maybe we can give each other some advice on things. Um, I have years of experience with summer squash and with peppers and with tomatoes, but with some things I, you know, I just don't know what I'm doing. Like that pineapple. I have no clue what I'm doing with that pineapple. Somebody just gave it to me. I decided to try it out. It was a fellow gardener, um, and a neighbor who had been growing pineapple in their yard. And so I decided to give it a shot. And to me, that is part of the joy of gardening is just trying new things. All right, if you can't tell, it is another day. It's the following day, my daughter woke up, so I ran out of time. This is real life here, life happens, and you don't have the chance to get to things that you wanted to finish in the garden. I have a laundry list of things to do, including laundry. Um, but for now, we were able to uh, cut back those crossing branches on the fruit trees. I was able to get to painting most of the fruit trees, most importantly, the avocado trees I got painted. Um, we planted some sunflowers, we up-potted the Thai peppers, we started some seedlings, which I'm pretty excited about. We've got um, two winter squash, two um, pumpkins, and two watermelons that I've never grown before. Honestly, I don't have the space for them yet. That's why I'm starting them by seed here, even though it's warm enough outside to plant them, but we're gonna figure out the space for them. If you hung around to this point, thank you so much for joining me for my garden tour and for the little bit of things that we do. This is kind of what each week looks like, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, my next big project is that I need to redo the drip irrigation on the hill and I need to redo the drip irrigation on my patio. Um, I've been kind of putting it off because I don't know exactly where I want everything. So I've been hand watering every other day for the last like three weeks. So I'm really looking forward to getting that done, but it'll probably be next weekend. Thank you so much for coming along with me. If you liked this video, please click the thumbs up button so you can see more videos like it in the future. If you have a comment about something that I could change or do better, leave it in the um, comments below. And if you wanna see what I'm doing um, throughout the summer and what I get from this garden, what I do in the kitchen, what I pull out of the garden, the thing, new things I'm gonna put in the garden, all of that fun stuff. If you wanna find out more, um, click the subscribe button so you can see what's gonna happen. Um, so just once again, thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.